can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood? Died it for me, who caused this pain? For me, who him to death pass soon? Amazing love, how can it be? Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, should die for me? Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, should die for me? He left his father's throne above. So free, so infinite is grace Emptied himself of all but love And bled for Adam's helpless race Tis mercy all immense and free Oh my God, it found out me Amazing love how can it be that thou, my God, should die for me? Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, should die for me? No condemnation now I dread, Jesus and all in him is mine. Alive in Him, my living head, and clothed in righteousness divine. Bold I approach the eternal throne, and claim the crown, Christ my own. Amazing love, how can it be? That thou, my God, should die for me Amazing love, how can it be That thou, my God, should die for me And we have distributed them amongst the people to whom you have addressed them we shall just go through the different panelists and they'll answer your questions. To, um, opening the program shall be Elder Nakunyada, who shall ask your questions and then give the answers. Thank you. Um, here's a question. On um, some, I will, I will paraphrase. Some, I will read them as they are. Yeah, this one is saying, why am I dating non-Adventists? Is it okay to date them? We have challenges sometimes. The way an issue is presented um, gives us an insight not on the problem, but on the, on the person. Um, so in this situation, we, before we even start talking about relationships, this person needs to know why they are in in a relationship before we say with an adventist or with a drunkard or with whoever so if you are not clear as to why you should get into a relationship never mind the client whom you are going to be involved in in that relationship so the first thing before i i in fact i will not uh, delve into um attending to whether it is proper or improper to date an Adventist, I would uh, require everyone, including the person here, that, I, uh, that you go back and have an understanding of what a relationship is and uh, what you need in a relationship so that at least we don't uh, guard the wrong gate. As these type of questions, we might end up uh, saying it's wrong to date an, an Adventist, yet we are addressing someone who is not even uh, 
well versed with the idea of relationships. Is marrying a stay at home uh, parent or a stay at home mother uh, a good idea? Um, is it something to consider when choosing a life partner? The issue of, uh, of um, marrying a stay at home spouse, is, especially a mother, I think, please, um, you should, the world that we are living in requires that you get certain competencies for you to end a decent life. Some of the challenges that we are having at our churches is because we did not prepare enough and now all of a sudden we see competition around us and we see competition that we cannot match because when you were required to go to school, you were busy uh, doing the stuff that was not appropriate at the time. Now you, you, you see my wife driving a car coming to church with my kids and you see me coming five minutes later with also my car and suddenly it's an issue to you because you cannot even afford a wheelbarrow. But uh, at some point we were all given the opportunities to do so. You realize that we have churches that, uh, that have problems and if you want to zero in into the challenges you will just see that we are dealing with people who miss the opportunities we are, dealing people, we are dealing with people who failed to, to work on important things in life. Now they want to associate poverty with holiness. Please be advised. This one talks of uh, feminism and gender equality in its, um, and its place in the Bible. God created um, Adam and Eve in his image. He created them equal, but with different roles and different responsibilities. Um, if, if you are clear on that, you will not have challenges with feminism. Anything that challenges the order of God is challenging God itself. And we know if something challenges God, it is Satanism. So feminism and gender issues are just, it's Satanism packaged differently. We are, we... Even, even, the, even the way God uh, created us, we are different. Our appearance, outward appearance, we are different. The, our emotional wiring is different. So why would you advocate for my wife to be like me and for me to be like my wife? How are we going to balance that? God created that so that we have balance. So the idea of feminism and the idea of gender equality. When we talk of gender, we talk of gender equity. Equity is when we give everyone equal opportunities. That's gender equity. That is why you find that we have female engineers, we have female pilots, we have, it's, it's gender equity. The equality aspect does not work. Please don't try this at home, even at school. It is a recipe of failure. Yeah, I'll, I'll, th these ones I have two which um, touch on spiritual, spiritual issues, spiritual attacks, and um, uh, how to end them. Spiritual battles are fought spiritually. You need to invest your time in uh, your, your own spiritual growth. Um, now, when, if you look at your background and if you look at your family, your family history, you realize that um, there, is, um, there is a presence of, uh, there are footsteps of the devil in your families. Unfortunately, we are too relaxed. We, it is only when someone maybe has been, uh, has manifested a demon that they still now think uh, they are being under spiritual attacks. But some of you, the way you get in and out of relationships, it's a spiritual attack. It's only that you have been blinded to think that it's something common. The way some of you just uh, fell ill, the way some of you um, even have uh, esteem issues, those are spiritual attacks. So how do we deal with spiritual issues, spiritual battles? 
uh, spiritual things are spiritually discerned. And, and we are trying to have someone who is not um, uh, well versed, who, is not, who has not invested anything spiritually. We are having them trying to um, find spiritual battles. It, it does not work that way. This is the time for you to invest your time in prayer and fasting. You know you are going to get married. You want to get married at some point. Why are you not praying about that today before anyone asks you out? You want to pray when someone has asked you out and your prayers are biased. You know you, at some point you want to get married. Why are you not praying right now? You know when people get married, sometimes they will have challenges having children. These are things that are common and you find them in your families. Why are you not praying and fasting about those things right now? If you read Christ, he had no, he, he, he had no agents because his life, he had prayed and he would always pray. But today the church um, is so accustomed to emergence prayers. We now want to pray because my daughter has been married for four years. They, they are not having uh, a kid. You, you took it for granted that uh, once people get married, they are going to have kids. These are things. So spiritual battles are around us. We always need to be um, to invest our time in, in spiritual things. And I am worried that someone whose phone is filled with naked people thinks that they can fight spiritual battles. I don't know how, because already they are in a, in a situation where they, they, they have made it impossible for them to be spiritually aware of anything. Um, this one is a testimony. This person is saying, I stopped drinking and um, I have experienced a wonderful life afterwards. So they are saying, please, it is possible. People can stop uh, drinking or be involved in, in drugs and alcohol abuse. When we say don't drink, we are not saying, um, we are saying it is for your benefit, it is for your good. I have seen drunk people failing to put on uh, a shoe, or I've seen them struggling to put on a shoe. And those are the same people who are encouraged to use protection while they are indulging in sexual activities. And you want someone to put on protection who cannot put on a, a shoe. And this is why we are in a disaster, because after getting drunk, you obviously get involved. And, and, and uh, some of us here, um, we, we, we are regretting because of this. So when we say don't get drunk, you will not, you will not drink your alcohol and make the church drunk. It is who, who is going to be affected. So when we say these things, it's not like the church is, be, is trying to be selfish. You don't carry the whole church to your home. It's just you and your spouse. So when you choose someone while at least you are drunk, it is your drunk decision, not the church. So you should separate issues when the church discourages you from doing certain things. It is not for the benefit of the church, but the benefit of your life. We want the church to be a place where people fellowship and are happy with their families. Now it, we, we are very careful, we are very cautious to say, may those we, we, tomorrow we are having a couple's day because someone decided to get married with someone who is not coming to church and they are making us cautious because we, we hate their feelings, we hate them. Why not do things the right way so that we are all happy and comfortable? May God bless you on that. This one was saying, <laughs> okay, I, I'm left with, uh, with two. Um, wh what does it take for the Lord to forgive someone? It just takes uh, repentance. Uh, to repent is to accept or to admit that I am wrong and I need help. That is enough for God to forgive you. Believe that because that is the solution from heaven. Can an SDA young woman have a successful marriage, find a, a right person, a right career? My simple answer to that is it is possible for a young SDA person to be the right person. If you are the right person, God will give you what you deserve. Um, what do you do if everything you pray for and 
uh, if every time when you pray you feel weak um, and um, sometimes you feel like sleeping out do you overcome uh, strange dreams and, and all um, unfortunately some of you are laughing but the only instance where you meet prayer is at church where you meet the opening prayer and the closing prayer the issue of praying is very crucial and critical especially at your ages please acquaint yourselves with a prayer for life uh, those who pray you have God and Jesus as their companions a lot of you uh, the young people you don't pray this is why you fall into these issues this is why you are so affected you, you have no time for prayer you are too busy to pray please may the Lord help you to pray yes you have organized a singing group well done for that where is the prayer group please let us be prayerful uh, I think um, in a nutshell that is um, all I, I, I had here may God bless you May God be with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elder Nakunyada. I think we shall quickly uh, move on to Dr. Alisa to, for her to deal with the questions she has. Thank you very much. I will start with this question, which is saying, how do I overcome self-esteem? When you read Proverbs 23, verse 7, it says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Uh, self-esteem is about how you view yourself how not about how others look at you if you have accepted how people look at you and you've accepted um, that they put you down and you have validated it you it, it then means that you have you have low self-esteem we should remember that we are worthy before God's sight let me just give a short example on um, a, a short story. Of course, it, it is mentioned about a farmer who had his animals on his farm. Uh, there was this little puppy. This little puppy one day was running around the farm and it, go, it went to the, uh, to the cows. And the cow says to the puppy, why are you all happy and all that? Do you know you are one of the most useless creatures on this farm? And the puppy felt sad. You moved to the, uh, the cow said, I give the farmer milk every day. You, you moved on to the chickens. The chickens say, oh yes, puppy, you are worthless. Uh, we give the farmer eggs every morning. You went to the other animal. The donkey says, I carry the farmer when he goes out, when he's uh, going out, I mean his errands, I carry his things, his lot. So this, this uh, puppy became very, very sad. The time that the farmer came back, the puppy was nowhere to be found. And the puppy, the farmer looked around for the puppy. Where is my puppy? Where is my puppy? And he called for the puppy. Uh, finally, the puppy comes out. Uh, he says to the farmer, where were you? He said, I'm worthless. All these other animals give you. The cow gives you milk. The chickens give you eggs and all that. But the farmer says, when I come back home, I look forward to you welcoming me. I brought you to this farm for a purpose. So the farmer, who is God, he created you for a purpose. Your purpose, when you're looking at, uh, there are people maybe who, be, who may be cows who give whatever. And all your, you should not, our challenge with esteem is when you're comparing yourself with other people. God did not create junk. Wake up to your true value. Uh, God made you in his image. And remove false standards. Because there are so many, when you're, when you're looking at yourself as a young woman, you look at yourself, okay, maybe you are not the light person that the media prescribes. You do not have the, the figure that the media prescribes. You don't, are not wearing the clothes that the media prescribes. By so doing, when you're focusing on false standards, it means that you look, at your, you look down upon yourself. So remove false standards and look at yourself as a person who was created in the image of God. And turn off failure tips. When I'm talking about turning off failure tips, you might have uh, been raised in a family where from your birth, people were looking down upon you. Maybe because of your complexion, because of your weight, because, I mean, they... Anything that you touched, maybe it is your mother who was saying all these wrong things about you that you will not amount to anything. Maybe your relatives were telling you that you will not amount to anything. 
you have the capacity to turn off those voices in your head. Because it is about you. You can turn off those voices which are telling you that you are useless, you are not going to amount to anything. So you can turn off failure tapes, People, those words, because sometimes you may be well-meaning, wanting to do what is right, but you hear what your mother always said about you, that you are worthless, uh, that you are a mistake, I didn't even want to give birth to you. So you have the capacity to turn that off and yield to God on a daily basis. It is God who can turn a situation. You know, Jabez prayed this prayer that God turned my situation right. I was conceived in pain and God turned that situation. So it may be your low self-esteem came or comes from your environment, from your social interactions. But when you remember that God did, does not create junk, he created you for a purpose and you yield to God on a daily basis. He, he um, handle your negative emotions. Because in our interactions as we, as we are growing up, all these things may have created negativity because people didn't love you the way you wanted to be loved. Nobody showed you love such that you, you, you have uh, valued yourself lowly. So when you come before God, present to him all these negative emotions that you have about yourself, that the society or your family or environment brought upon you. And God is able, because we have a high priest who is able to understand your needs and your emotions. So coming to God, yielding yourself to God and knowing that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And I'm a royal priesthood. Uh, to the person who's feeling uh, very low, hug yourself. And then uh, there's a question here which is saying, how do I set boundaries in a relationship? I think maybe you can just say to the law and to the testimony. When we read what God says, when we read God's word, it tells us our challenges, we have people, maybe we have, uh, you are a girlfriend, a girlfriend who is doing wifely duties on a girlfriend tender. When you are doing wife duties on a girlfriend tender, it means that you are, what you are doing is wrong. So you need to set boundaries and understand what is my role, what should I do in this relationship and to what extent. And this is only guided by your relationship with Christ. Number one, when you know yourself and you know uh, what, I, I like what Mary did. When the angel visited Mary, Mary was already engaged to Joseph. But Mary says, how can this be since I don't have a husband? She already knew your boundaries. She already knew that even if I'm engaged to this man, my boundaries are this. I cannot, even the angel is saying, how can this be since I don't have a what? A husband. She had boundaries. She knew the, what a girlfriend is supposed to do. But our challenge is young people who engage on things that are supposed to be done. You, your hands should not gravi gravitate to places where unmarried hands should not go. You have not, uh, we also have a challenge of people who say, stop it, I like it. You are not firm on your boundaries. You are not firm, you give mixed signals. So you are supposed to have, when you set your boundaries, be firm on your boundaries and communicate. You set your boundaries by communicating with this person. You know, people get into awkward situations and they'll say we ended up sleeping together because you never discussed the boundaries. You didn't discuss what do we do in this relationship, what is acceptable. And we get what is acceptable in a relationship from what the, the word of, of God tells us to do. And it should not be anything difficult. I always say this to young people. Like I, I gave an example of the day that I said yes uh, to pastor. It's the very day that I told him that you only touch my hand. I didn't leave it to him. I said you only touch my hand. The furthest you can go maybe would be my elbow. This I declared on the very first day. We didn't hug and I said, we, and our first kiss was our wedding kiss because I, I said this on, our, on the very first day that I said yes to him. I did not leave it to him because I was thinking if I don't say this, what if he has other things for me? Let me tell him what I believe and what my boundaries are. So when you set, you believe, know yourself, know what you want. Your relationship with God will guide how you set the boundaries and communicate those boundaries strongly. Don't maybe, uh, whatever, variegate on the boundaries. And then the next um, question. Sorry, sorry, Dr. Elisa. 
because of our time challenges, if you could just choose one question that you think is very important and just quickly respond to it, and then we'll allow Elder Noku to respond to two questions from his pack, then we'll allow the elder to wrap up the program. Unfortunately, we have run out of time. Okay, thank you. Then I think I'll just choose this question, which is talking about uh, what indicates a toxic relationship. Number one, if the relationship is violating God's laws and principles, that relationship is already toxic. If we are doing things that are going against God's word, that is toxic. If you are giving yourself too much, if the relationship is draining you, if you are the one who is forcing things, that relationship is toxic. But the thing, bottom line is God's word is the standard. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Alisa. Elder Noku, over to you. All right, I'll read one question and I'll summarize the other three. The first one is forex trading, stock trading, a biblically legit business. Right, here is a principle. You and I are the stewards delegated by God. That's a principle. Now, I will not find a verse which talks about forex trading, but there's a principle whereby you and I are the stewards. That's a principle. God has not allowed us to delegate stewardship to other people. Forex trading and stockbroking, specifically in equities, I'll be categoric there, Forex trading and stock in equities is a form of passing that stewardship to somebody else whom you have no control over. You and I cannot control the stock market. You and I cannot control the forex market. We have no control there. So it's like delegating to somebody whereby we have no control. And unfortunately, from my understanding, subject to further uh, discussion, forex trading is a no-go area because we have no control over it. So basically, we're saying to God in his face, I'm giving this job to somebody else. But investing in stable markets, that is okay because you have control over it. You decide to say, I want this particular market, I want that particular market. So you still maintain that what? responsibility. The, the, next three quest, the next three questions basically will be summarized in this manner. Debt management, as indicated in the morning, should be avoided like a cancer. The only thing that debt should do for you is if it will give you a capital project whereby you are going to get back a return. If you can't get a capital project from debt, don't do it. That's a long and short of it. And if your salary is small, do not get into debt to substitute the gap. Don't ever do that. Instead, feel free to use what is known as third and fourth stream income. But don't get into third and fourth stream income, which will adversely affect your time with family. It will now work to its advantage. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I think let's give another round of applause for our panelists. Thank you. We shall give this time to the elder. He prefers to use the podium. So we shall have the rest of the panelists walk out and then the elder will remain here on the stage by himself. He'll attend to the questions that he has and then wrap up the program for us. Thank you very much, Elder Noku, Elder Nakunyada, and Dr. Laisa. May the Lord really bless you. I ask you for a simple favor. Do not ask questions to ring fence your point of comfort. You need to ask questions because you require answers. That which you know, go and implement. You must not uh, ask for comfort from others. And uh, let's say, I'm talking to this one. Um, she has a boyfriend, and the guy cannot share his phone. That's number one. And I repeat to all of you who are seated here, if the, your boyfriend or a girlfriend's phone bothers you, then it is not the phone that's bothering you. It is the boyfriend or the girlfriend. It's as simple as that. So you may not fight over a phone. You have challenges. Learn to let go. That's number one. Number two, she says, the boyfriend say, I'm not going to let you into my phone because it may create problems. And unfortunately, you don't see that problems have already been created. 
And the last one is you are asking whether to marry this guy. It may, yeah, it depends on your foolishness. <laughs> yes, you, yes. I don't see what is confusing you here. What quality contributes to a healthy relationship? Let me pack this one. What exactly is fornication? How should I, a Christian dress? Fornication is where, where you are sexually active. When we are saying sexually active, we mean you kiss, you fondle, because the Bible says when you look at a woman and you think otherwise, then you have committed adultery. So fornication is when you do everything else and forget to produce children. Then this one is saying, <laughs> when entering... When entering into a new relationship, is it really necessary to tell your new partner everything that happened in your past? That is, yeah, you can tell him everything if nothing happened. <laughs> is there anything wrong with wearing a wedding ring? One pastor said people who wear rings have fallen, yes, they fell in love. I am a Tebele lady, and in our culture, most of our parents don't want us to get married to Shona guys. What must I do? Because at the same time, I need the parents' blessing. It's your decision. <laughs> What's your advice on the age gap between a couple, considering that for if you think someone is too old for you, then he's too old? <laughs> this one, Arguti, I am dating a guy 10 years older than me, is that safe? No, it's not safe. Because, because you are already feeling unsafe. Now, what is... This, what is the safe age difference for a healthy relationship and does background uh, difference matter. Yes, background difference matter because you interpret issues according to your background. So if your backgrounds uh, differ, you may not uh, understand other things that the other guy understands. Do you know that dogs have medical aid? <laughs> guys, Guys have a tendency to string along with ladies and give the impression that they want, uh, they want you, they want to have a relationship with uh, you. Then later they disappear, give a silly excuse to uh, saying it, we were just friends. Why do they do that? Because they are too available. <laughs> you are too available. No, guys must not put a price tag on you. Put a price tag on yourself. If you are trading on the wrong market, don't expect returns. Is there a problem for a boy to start business with his girlfriend while they are still dating? After you've analyzed the fact that should you separate and the business is still making a profit, what happens? You, you guys, is it possible for you to have a business with a girlfriend, then the relationship fails and the business continues, then you marry another girl and you meet the other partner for board meetings? I have been dating a, a non-Adventist for more than two years, you are a fool. At what point in a relationship do you discuss about uh, finances? For example, how much do you earn? Asking someone how much he earns is not discussing finances. <laughs> Elder Machando, do you say it's entirely impossible for purity, impossible for purely platonic friendships between men and women, young men? Let me, let me make this very clear to you. 
The only interpretation that you can give honestly is what is happening in you. There is no way you can explain how the other party is feeling. Then how can you say it's an honest relationship when the only territory that you can cover is yourself? How do you, how do you say so? It's like, for example, is it okay to go around and hug everyone because I feel nothing? The fact that you are feeling nothing, does it mean everyone is not feeling anything? <laughs> so by the end of the day, we cannot evaluate things based on how we feel. Number two, why is it that we continuously want to justify friendships with the opposite sex? Why? Because you are benefiting. Whatever the benefit is. And the one unfortunate thing that I've known with you people is everyone else wants to befriend the opposite sex but does not want his partner to befriend the opposite sex. That's exactly how foolish you guys are. This one is saying, how does one go about lobola? It depends on your culture. How can I overcome addiction for attention? Die to self. What are the qualities that contribute to a health relationship? God-fearing. If you fear God and give him glory, then you have a relationship with God and with men. I think these are the, unless there is anyone with a, with a difference, even if you have a difference, suffer in silence. Because uh, here it is, guys, and I'll put it uh, across to you. Most, the reason why most of you ask questions is not because you don't know. It is because you want to find comfort in an uncomfortable zone. We know what is right. We know what is pure. We know what must be done. Let's go and do it. We all know. We are clear of relationships that must be terminated. Go and terminate them. We are clear of relationships that are not holistic. Why are you keeping them? Why are you praying over issues that do not require prayer? Everyone should concentrate uh, on cleaning his own background. You, people must not be smart because you want them to be smart. Do not recreate people because they owe themselves an existence. So by the end of the day, let's be honest, let's be truthful with the self. We know what's supposed to happen. I will ask, I'll ask two people, you in black and you young men with a white shirt, please stand up. You in black, I, 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 I assumed you are mature when I looked at you and I assumed you are mature when I looked at you, you can stand up. You, yes. I'm going to ask you, a very simple question, answer to the question. Why would you want, yeah, you may come here and use the mics. I, uh, this, this will be my final question, then we close in prayer. I assumed you are mature and you are going to answer the questions in a mature way. That's the assumption. I just want you to be honest. Why would you want uh, friends of the opposite sex? Why, why would, I'm not talking for, of, of you in person, I'm talking of you representing the, youngs, the, the other ladies. Why would you want uh, friends of the opposite sex? Uh, okay, my opinion, I think to get to know how the other gender behaves, what they Just like. wait a bit. <laughs> Let's assume you are dating, you are dating this lady. Would you want her to go and ask another man on how to run you? No. no. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. So my opinion, um, you get to know what, uh, like generally what guys like, what they don't like. Wait a bit. <laughs> Assuming you are dating this young lady, would you want the standards to be set by a John from there so that he comes and he behaves in John's manner before you? Uh, no. No. <laughs> no, 
it's just to get a, a, a general, like a general opinion of how they behave. Would you want a woman who comes home with the ideas that are borrowed from all over and not from you? Nah, no. What else? <laughs> yeah, I think that's it. Is there anything else? Okay, men are saying no. Okay, representing men, why would you want to befriend we, me, me, me people of the opposite sex? I think the, the same reasons that she gave uh, are the same reasons the guys do. Uh, give me the reasons. Yeah, to know how girls behave, how to run your own relationship from other people's perspective. Would you want to be run by a Mary from somewhere else because he has consulted? No. No. Uh, basically, I think that's also. You guys, you guys, she's representing the women, they are not comfortable. And he is representing men, and they are, they are not comfortable. So who are you partnering? If men are not comfortable, and the women are not comfortable, who are your friends? Who is comfortable in his girlfriend getting notes from next door and applying them on him? Can you show by raising your hand? Nobody. So your notes do not work. Nobody, no, nobody is interested in that type of work. So I will tell you the reason why you befriend those people. It is because you guys, you are not principled. That's number one. And number two, there is, there is something that you are enjoying. And number three, most of you are not of, uh, of uh, pure moral standards. And most of you, you are offering a friendship with benefits. Period. So it's silent post prostitution. If all of you are not comfortable, then what, what is the point for discussion? If all of you guys are not comfortable, then who are you trying to fool? Who is fooling who? Why are you engaged when everyone else is not prepared for that engagement? This is my answer to these guys. Do not pretend to be foolish. You are not fools. You know what you want. And we have a problem, and a very big problem, where women tr are trying to run their men, or girls are trying to run their men, by borrowed notes. It's not proper, it's, it's disrespectful. It's disrespectful to go and ask John on how I should behave, how I should manage my finances, how I should manage my relationship. And you want John now to be running my life. That is disrespect. And I respect, I repeat, that is disrespect. And all guys agree with me. It's disrespect for to run me with the borrowed notes. It's disrespect. Therefore, if it, then it is disrespect, let's not pretend to be ignorant. And on the same note, it is also disrespect to expect your woman, to expect your girlfriend to behave like the lady next door. Why don't you go and date the lady next door? Why are you behave, be, befriending someone who... You guys, it's a very simple question. Why befriend someone who has the notes to your life, then go and apply them somewhere else? Why not just pick it and go? It's simple as that. So as for me, until I'm buried seven feet underground, I will never ordain those relationships. They are a recipe for disaster. Every man he has a head, it must be used. And every woman he has a head, and it must be used. May you rise. I will give you one piece of advice. I will first of all ask you a very simple question. Who arranged your relationship? Who arranged your relationship? I'm asking you a very simple question. Who arranged your relationship? At times, we think we made choices when our friends created the environment where the choices were made. Who arranged the environment? 
At times, we, pe we believe we made choices. When one drove us into a relationship, who then arranged the relationship? At times, we believe we had a choice in a relationship because we were together with this young man or this young woman on Facebook and we spoke and we spoke until we were intoxicated. Who arranged the relationship? At times, the, dressmaker, the, the hairdresser did a very good job on someone's hair and it was so appealing. Who then arranged the relationship? At times, the, 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 the packaging material that the, your, your lady wears, whether it is a result of exercise, whether it is a result of, of, of in, in inheritance, or it is a result of uh, borrowed techniques, that much I do not know. When, he, when you fall in love, who then arranged relationships? There is no one who has a relationship that has not been arranged. There is no one who has a relationship that has not been tailored for him somewhere else. The question is, it's either tailored by those who have a feeling towards you or who have a negative feeling towards you. Unfortunately for all young people, if not, if not the greater majority of you young people, the people who you trust most with your relationship are people who do not matter. You trust more of your friends. You trust more of your, 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 your schoolmates. You trust more of everyone else. And the person that you exclude from your relationship, who happens to be your parent, is the person who matters. Everyone else has a say except those who matter. Now I want you to go and think seriously over this thing. Are people who matter not worried about your relationship? And I repeat, are people who matter not worried about your relationship. I repeat, are people who matter not worried with your relationship? May the good Lord bless you as you put order in yourselves. Young people, we wish you well. Young people want you to be successful. Young people want you to run successful organizations. And if you cannot run yourself in terms of passion, nothing else will be achieved by you. So go and tame your passions. Allow the Holy Spirit to rule. If there are some who are having adulterous relationship, if there are some who are double-crossing, I want you to go home and think straight. Are you adding value to your life or are you reducing value? You are of royal blood. We love you guys. We wish you well. It is my wish and my prayer that you appreciate that. There are places I have never been to. When my children get there, I am happy. There are things that I may not have done. When my children go beyond, I am happy. The only gift that you can give your parent when you get married is peace of mind. Only the knowledge that where you are going, you will be happy, happy and happy ever after. Can you honor your parent by giving them peace of mind? I'll ask Mrs. Saruchera to come up front. So I have Mrs. Saruchera with me. For those who honestly require a prayer to make it in life, you raise your hands as she prays. Katina Matei, Baba Vedu, Makatina Kira Namponis Jesu, Tudak Kutenda ini nguwe kuna mata. Tudak Kutenda ini mwari ni programu ya ngairi pakati pedu. Ino simu zira, ino simbisa. Because Vana Vedu, they are burdened. Tudak Kutenda ini mwari, because you are the burden bearer. Tudak Kutenda ini mwari, because you are the red rope of our lives. Tudak Kutenda ini mwari, ni kutimuno zikinura. Roda kutenda imari nukti mnopa simba netariru. Vajinji vangabara sikiru wa netariru. Kuchaya kutoziva kutitoitei in these very bad toxic relationships. Zino shaisa wabere kirugari. Zino, zino vashaisa wope. We just pray my father that you touch every relationship in this place. Chero kwatakava 
ndimi moga munogona kuvaka nekuva kurudza pakakora moga mwari ndi munopaziva i just pray my lord that you lift all spirits ma mweya yose yakaputsika yaka yakapukanyika nekuda kwe kwezvinobata zvenyika ino tataura mwari kubva pakutanga kuti kune ma, mapono ari kunetsa muvana vedu pane ma drugs ari kunetsa muvana vedu pane ma games chaiwo ari kunetsa muvana vedu mwari makatisika so that we atite muswe tinoramba tiri pamsoro there is no way we can ever excel kana tichitambira ma territory akadaro ma territory akadaro is the ground football ground ra diaboros that we move away from these territories because they don't belong to us. We pray, my Father, that you enlarge our territories, Mumakeria's Edu, in everything that we touch. Let it flourish. Let us flourish, Lord, in the courts of our God. We are going to, we are going to prosper in health and mentally everything physically. Hakuna chatichada chichava from another person. Mwanamskana will not get fulfillment from a husband who's who's a drunk, who's who's a, who's 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 junk. I mean, what it's about to say, you want to this is junk and this is fake. Tiende pamberi, tichungo kuda ne kurumbi zastare nyu because you walk with us, you hold our hand, you hug us, you lift us up, you embrace us, you you we will sing songs in the night because me mwari ne muri pakati pedu. Tuda ukutenda mwari. My presenters, a sanga at your present and my panels that I would tend I for all the wisdom that you have given us, for all the, the strength that you have given us to make the right decisions. The doctor and I, my doctor and I, Nemuria Kamachando Marivangochi, Zizisa, Negurat, Ratriz and Zirazok Fambanazo. We are so happy when our children do well. Varopa Fazi, Marivai Tiosa, Kanaka, I pay Simba to move from one level of faith to another. My dear, you are so grateful. For you are our God. To the extent that my my request by next week's program is that I'm on board. So, Amen. Thank you very much. As I I I hand over the mic to the to the to the to the MC. Allow me, as a parent, now I have taken off the jacket of being elder Machando. Allow allow me, as a parent, to to vent my anger on this, that, or that lady. Who, I'm talking as a parent, who knows she is dating a person not of her faith? Who does not, who does not respect the godly principle? And even his heart, her heart is telling her that this is wrong. And you come here and you have the audacity to ask a question over things that you need to make decisions over. Are you a passenger in your own life? Are you telling me I'm investing in a person who does not think? Are you telling me you are even ignoring yourself when the warning bells are being read? And you come here and you want to ordain your, 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 your weakness to become faith. I want to tell you, we have invested in you because we trust you. Go and use those brains. And I'm speaking as a father. You worry us. When you start thinking from the neck downwards. Kuti bangwe bangaramba Simba ramu pone simu ne simba muropa Renye nye, renye nye Inni ne muri angu Tona matamari toeda Kudivi rachesu Doe Shokaramba, doye dandega, doye dandega, doye dandega. Ah, mako morero azere, muna shokaramba, doye. Jesus, 
Oh, yeah. 